Hi everybody, it's Ashley. Um, Merry Christmas, or not. Well, I don't know, Merry is a good thing, so like, even if you don't do Christmas, still be merry. Uh, I'm just popping in here, first thing, to really quickly mention that we are not going to be uploading an episode uh, in the first half of January. We're skipping one uh, for the holidays. Uh, I'm going to be traveling, and Alex and I thought it would be nice to just maybe take uh, an episode off for, uh, you know, we don't want to record over the holidays, and yeah. So, forgive us, enjoy your holidays, and we will see you again at the end of January. Uh, Have a wonderful and happy new year. Also, uh, this week... Our theme song is the song Christmas Time is Wonderful from Jonathan Colton and John Roderick's wonderful Christmas album, One Christmas at a Time. Definitely check it out. You can find it and all of Joko's other music at jonathancolton.com. All right, here's the episode. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here is your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'm looking at your face right now, Alex. We are in the same room, and in this room with us is a very special guest, my dad, Chris Hatton. Say hello. Hello? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I guess before we get into stuff, do you want to like introduce yourself or is that weird oh is that part of the deal you're supposed to read a a really we need to we need to know um, based the basics of your resume yes (laughs) so we know what your qualifications (laughs) what do you think of the basics of my resume (laughs) honestly i wouldn't know where to begin it's nothing to do with genetics right um i'm a screenwriter and i'm a, a film director Yep. Um, and some of my high-profile credits include Star Trek The Next Generation mm-hmm. and uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and more recently, a film called Battle of the Damned starring Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, is it? Is that, um, where can people find it? Yeah, I think in the dollar bin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's generally where I shop for movies. <laughs> exactly. I just bought like four or five the other day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Pirate sites, BitTorrent sites, um, you know. You know, it was, was it, it was streaming somewhere. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think it runs on Sci-Fi Channel all the time. Um, Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, the Sci-Fi Channel has really 
of improved? All. I think so. Yes. I, we can, the word a, I was looking I have, for. There's a, there's a show we can talk about that I'm obsessed <laughs> with that season two just went on Netflix. Well, then we may we may come back around to that. Okay. We may come back around to that. Mm, what is it? The Magicians. Oh, I don't know it. You don't know Magician? Oh, he's been trying to get me to Sorry. watch it. <laughs> okay, well, we can talk. All right, about it. well, yeah, well, <laughs> gosh. Also, to our listeners out there, a Merry Christmas if it is your Christmas. If you don't do that, then Merry Monday. If it's Hanukkah for you. We're recording during Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah Even if right this now. won't be airing during Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and happy Festivus. To the rest of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we're If we sound weird, we are in the dining area at a hotel in Portland. So there might be some <laughs> background interference. But it's cool to be looking at your face, Alex. It's very nice. I, re- I rarely get to see your lovely face. <laughs> um, so what's... We, we were chatting a little early, but what, what's been going on with you lately? Well, I haven't been doing a lot of new stuff. Uh, the last three episodes I feel like I've been talking about, I've been painting. <laughs> <laughs> He's a painter now. I'm a painter now. What do you paint? <laughs> He's a poet. Um, He's a painter. I'm, Houses? I'm, no, um, so there, I learned a technique at um, a little class in uh, at a craft, craft warehouse, yeah. and it's like fluid acrylics. So you mix acrylic paint with water in some sort of medium, um, and then you add some sort of um, liquid to disturb them. So when you pour them all together on a canvas, they'll sort of separate a little bit, but then also make really cool like um, chaotic patterns. It's really cool looking. It's very easy, too. So it's very fun to like, oh, I made something in a really short amount of time. And then if you don't like it, just pour over it. There you go. So it's been fun. Um, and I've been doing those as like gifts for, for people. Um, because, <laughs> Here's because a painting I, I, I made for you. I take that home. It's a solution with paint. Well, it's on a canvas. Dri- it's on a canvas when it dries. Um, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> What is this panel of paint they're, and they're, they're very easy to appreciate because they're very um, impressionistic. Mm. They're, they're not very challenging. Do you smoke a lot of weed? I don't. <laughs> um, although one of my family friends, she was over for my dad's uh, 57th birthday uh, slash, is, slash their, my family's Christmas party. And she's like, um, do you want a, hol- a holiday present? Do you want some weed? And I was like... Thanks, but I'm good. <laughs> Apparently, she offered to my sister too, who has two infants or two children, two little ones. And she's like, "No, like read the room." <laughs> yeah, well, you know, who even knows these days with it being legal around here? It's like, I mean, yeah, what's the delivery I probably system? Should. The candy bars or, or a doobie she, because she, it's she, a very different socially. I'm, yeah, I'm, it's true. I'm very different. I personally, I'm partial to the bong, <laughs> but. You're a bong man. Yeah, but that's also because I'll cough just from looking at it. So, <laughs> and I felt like that was the easiest uh, delivery method for me. Merry Christmas, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about how about what you? What kind of Christmas wreath do you have? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is stinky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. You're not supposed to burn the wreath. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting a little scary. Uh, <laughs> is this is this how your podcast normally goes? I thought this was a highbrow literary thing. See, we named it a highbrow literary name. People get confused. People do get confused. Is. We did have uh, an approach, an email from um, a writer who I'm sort of connected to, and she asked if we what we sort of did. Yeah, thinking maybe we were a book review thing, and, and it's like, like, oh no, no, we're just very confusingly named. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. It's it's a, it's a it's a joke. <laughs> we do love books. We just don't always have time for books. Yes, yes. The the concept, if folks at home aren't totally clear on it, is you know the idea that you know we sort of consider literature as being one of the you know higher sort of more worthy art forms, but we feel that other um, you know, maybe more popular media can be have just as much merit and be just as worthy of sort of discussion and consideration. So other things have literary merit too. Yeah, it's confusing. Like it's what? Not... Like what? Well, like you know, what are you into these days? <laughs> I mean, um, I, I like trash movies, yeah. romantic ah. comedies. What's wrong with a romantic? What's a comedy? good trash movie? Oh right now. gosh, right now I don't know about. Right now, um, I know that 
a lot of people right now are talking about and watching a lot of Hallmark movies. Oh. I can't do those. I can't either. I can't do and it. There was another podcast I was listening to. Um, shout out to Throwing Shade. They were talking oh, those about. Those guys are great. They were talking about um, the difference between Hallmark movies and Lifetime movies, holiday <laughs> movies. And Hallmark is all about loving your husband, and Lifetime is all about not loving your husband. <laughs> I mean, they, they, it wasn't it wasn't exactly like that, but getting a big stalk by your husband. Yeah, it was all the like shady stuff. Whereas, like, yeah, li- Lifetime Hol- is a lot grittier. Yeah, and Hallmark is very like <laughs> devotion. Yeah, all the I think yeah. That's fair, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's a good characterization of it. I think they had a, a guest on the show that was that had a drinking game for watching Hallmark movies. Oh gosh, um, be quiet, phone. And it was uh, like really silly stuff. Like, does she have brown eyes and blonde hair in the main character? Or like, yeah, yeah. it was just really <laughs> funny. There's a, a company up in Canada, and I cannot remember who they are now, but they they specialize in that exact kind of yeah. you know whatever it's, it's the latest Christmas movie or whatever, but they they design these scripts in a way that there are the, there are these certain scenes that can be filmed with a with a cast change. So oh. they do a straight version and they do a gay version. Of the same movie, the same script. Well, you know, I, I that you know, like the husband. Or the, no, I totally get that. For, yeah, I, I remember it was. Um, I took a an LGBT lit class back in like my freshman year or something, and um, they were showing us like how on like the gay cable channel they have like gay versions of like the commercials that they run on other channels where it's just like one word difference There's where so much like better, like yeah well yeah it'll just be one little word like you know this you know woman you know some commercial woman's in the house and then another woman comes in and in the gay version they call each other honey and in the straight version that word's just not there and like it's it's exactly the same commercial otherwise just one word makes all the difference mm. yeah okay so, total gear shift, but it, it reminded me. So, we've been, we all saw Star Wars. We all saw The Last Jedi within the last two days. Um, not to bring up anything in particular from that at the moment, but, so we've been talking lately because we talk about gay stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. Where's the gay character, huh? Where's the gay character we were promised? I was, I was. BBA. <laughs> BBA, it's gay. Right? Okay, sure. <laughs> but do you remember? Well, tell me I'm wrong. I, I don't I couldn't refute it, but I couldn't really <laughs> so support it either. <laughs> but by that, I mean, virtue, there are a lot of. I mean, in that case, it. it's Poe and BB-8 though, because they had a really touching <laughs> moment when they were reunited. Well, I always sort of imagine BB-8 as female, personally. Oh, okay, I like that too. Though. Why? Oh, just cute. I like it. R two and C three PO are balls. both. R two and C three PO are both. <laughs> You know, masculine droids <laughs> to, to a degree. They're 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 male coded. Leia is not masculine. Okay, but he's <laughs> male coded. Okay, to being masculine. But Leia's read on him was so good in this yes. uh, this movie, where she was like, "What was it? Uh, change that anxious face or whatever." Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wipe that anxious look <laughs> off your face. That was funny. Uh, but no, uh, do you remember? It was um, way back when, when when these films were just uh, you know a glimmer in Disney's eye. Um, I believe it was Abrams said there's gonna be a gay character. I don't remember that. See, it really stuck with me. Well, because we're waiting. We're waiting for that, (laughs) and you know, it might be Chewbacca. They did this with with Sulu in uh, in Star Trek movies. They they did. Just, no, he's gay. He was always gay. No. And you know what? If they did that, I would be pleased. They, they really did. I thought a, a, an okay job with Sulu in the newest. Um, yeah, it was nice. You know, it done. wasn't too much for you know people that aren't you know looking, looking for that. <laughs> but for us, for me, I was like, I mean, I've never been the biggest Star Trek fan. I appreciate it, um, but I was like, yes, <laughs> not like, oh my god. I was just like, yes. <laughs> A good character. Right, they don't knock you around with it. It's just yeah. there. It's it is. there. It's there. And that's all we really need out of Star Wars. And that's probably all that Disney. Okay, well, what do you do. think about the fact that George Takei didn't like the fact that they that they made this? Um, I think it probably has something to do with maybe his generation. Um, I think he and, and also he played a character that he didn't get to play that part of that character. So maybe he felt that oh, that's not that character. I played that character. That's not who that character was. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I mean, I, I know th- I know that he can be old fashioned. I watched his um, documentary with him and his husband, um, and yeah, he has some really. I mean, he's he's quite old, you know. 
He's, <laughs> he's quite old. He's quite old. <laughs> he, he, he has a lot of opinions, especially about like um, health and fitness too. His husband's sort of overweight and he you know, picks at him for that. So <laughs> I think it just might be, you know, generational and all that in, yeah. in that case. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just waiting for my my Star Wars gay. I mean, everyone wanted it to be Poe and it still could be. It still could be. It still could be. They were really trying hard with purple hair in him though. Did you see the angles they were using? They were so they were making them appear so close in their conversations. Huh, that was not something that I read. I did not. I did you not. You saw some tension? I saw some them? tension. I didn't appreciate it. Well, you know what? Though you thought there was a romance in Thor Ragnarok, so you need to stow that because I think you're out of control. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought maybe I think maybe my reading says that maybe the the sort of either the shot they used or how close the actors were, maybe that was them trying too hard to sort of combat them. Mm-hmm. That to me it sort of read as. Oh, they're trying to, you know, show like really? they're angry at each other, but they kind of like each other. Yeah, I didn't read it that way. I mean, <laughs> that again, I, you know, I'm not. But you know me, I'm the one to sort of like underestimate those things. <laughs> like, You're like uh, that was there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I'm the person who didn't realize that Hannibal and Will Graham were totally gay until the end of season three of Hannibal. So. <laughs> You just ruined season three for me. I mean, it's it's still subtext. It's so it's so blatant. It's ridiculous. It's that the I most didn't blatant think. subtext. Yeah, it's no. I mean, it's ridiculous how that I didn't. I just didn't believe it. I just didn't believe it could be there. And then what? And then going back, I'm like, yeah, they're super gay the whole time. I just didn't believe that they could be. <laughs> An- another choice for the for the last Jedi they could have done was um, instead of having Rose and the sister, it could have been Rose and her wife or girlfriend. Sure, that I would mean, have been a good choice. I thought that would have been cute. That would have worked. That would have worked would have been better. Although then they would have to explain to audiences why her and oh yeah Finn kiss at the end. But well, I just don't think they needed to. They didn't need to. I thought it was sweet. Usually, I'm like really, well, really not honestly, into on screen kisses. It, I especially. mean, again, maybe this is just me, but it kind of came out of nowhere for me. Like I did not see any romance happening between the two of them at any point. It almost felt like. Her expressing this sort of love that the movie is trying to really uh, talk about the force with, like I'm sort of I don't know, it's kind of <laughs> abstract, but like like your paintings. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if they're like my paintings, but just just the sort of like you know, in this moment, I just saved your life because we need life, so I'm gonna sort of show you this as a physical act. Well, okay. And that does... I, I don't want to bag on this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you did enough of that he, earlier. What was he... No, no, that, that wasn't me. I have <laughs> friends who work on Star Wars, and I love it. Um, what was he trying to do? Be an, he was trying to be a, an idiot hero. He wanted to die a hero. Because well, he, he they, just, were, they were really... Him and Poe Star Trek were, did that better. Sure. First, back in 1967, when <laughs> well, I, Cap- Captain Decker tries to ram the ship into the Doomsday Machine. Uh-huh. And well, what does that get him? Burned alive. And we already had our dramatic sacrifice by spaceship. Like, you know, Laura yeah. Dern already but seriously, did that. Wh- and, and so did what, the, um, what, the sister. What too, Rose's sister. Why is he doing that? He and, feels and, that if he sacrifices himself to blow this cannon up, then he will keep the rebels safe. And that's a theme that's heavily, but why, heavily why, that. If that cannon can take out this that side of that mountain, what is that crappy little, you know... Well, I mean, Independence the way, Day. Yeah, the way that Rose... Ship. Independence or, Day, why can a rocket and a plane flying up into this giant spaceship that's going to yeah. obliterate them? I mean, they, they, yeah, they, but that's a dope they give movie. it one line to say, like, <laughs> this thing's super-duper armored. Our only shot is to go straight down the throat of it. Like, yeah. that's its weak point. That's its, you know... Death Star air vent yeah, thing. Air vent, like, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're buying that, right? I, I have to. I have no other choice. The movie told us that this was no, true. You host your own podcast. You have. <laughs> I have to work within you... the text. <laughs> this is what the text tells me. <laughs> what, however preposterous it is, that is what the text says, well, and I must accept and, it. And and I think Luke mentions it in it. He's like, 
I, I'm this legend, but what does that mean? Why, why do we need a legend? And, and he talks to Ray about that. And I think that's, you know, Poe struggles with that of like being, wanting to be this one guy who does everything while people die around him. Mm. Um, and then Finn is struggles with that too. He's like, I need to save these people. So I'm going to do something stupid and mm-hmm. not think about anybody else. Even yeah. if he's trying to save everybody else. Yeah. I felt if anything, that sort of, that moment didn't, it didn't really have any build up. You know, that wasn't like a theme throughout Finn's story. Well, of and also like, without his decision, there wouldn't have been any immediate peril in his life. Like he was bringing it on himself. Yeah. And I think that's why it's And so weird. in fact, you know, earlier in the movie, he was like, I mean, he was running off to save he, Ray, but his but whole motivation away. has always been like, protect Ray and she wasn't even there you know if she'd been present he was like I have to do this in order to protect Ray that would have been one thing but he never really had that motivation before to like be the hero yeah he he never wanted that and he didn't have any sort of moments where Poe rubbed off on him enough that it would no yeah no they They barely barely seen each other I liked the moment where Poe and Ray met for the first time. Yeah, I was like, hi, nice to meet you. We've <laughs> we were, never been face-to-face. We've been face in a movie and a half together and we've never met. <laughs> you know what I love about this is all these people going around doing the, the um, you know, the, the, the junket, the press junket, mm-hmm. including, and I've forgotten her name, the, the, the epically tall. Uh, oh, oh, Gwendolyn Christie. Yeah, lady. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm not even sure she actually had to be on set. Right. Yeah, I know. She, Same thing happened in the first film. You saw her one though. eye. People were her yeah, one, saw her eye one eye. Through the mask. People were upset in the first film that she didn't get a big enough role, yeah. and they were hyping it up. And same thing this one. I mean, at least she. At least did she got to something. fight. She I had actually, an actual uh, scene. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she got a sword fight. She's cool. a ter- terrific actress. Oh, She's yeah. wonderful. I mean, She's really interesting. Brilliant. And they should have used her more. They I think, I think there was a, a variety. The, the magazine little um, clip with her and John Boyega where they were they had this mystery box and they had to stick their hand in it and feel it it was hilarious oh yeah I heard about that I didn't I didn't watch it's but... like, like in Dune right when he has to reach into the <laughs> Benny Gesserit box you haven't seen Dune I haven't it's one of the Bin, bin movies that I just popped up oh, so okay. it's on my list you have the David Lynch one right yeah, yeah. oh yeah not well, those sci-fi channel ones we don't talk about the <laughs> I I really enjoy it that movie. Dune? Is yeah. The Lynch it, Dune? Oh, yeah. Know, there, I there's, mean, there's any number of things that, that are probably not quite right with it, but it is fantastic. Well, what, and it just like... lavish and incredible. What a fascinating, like, David Lynch making Dune. Like, <laughs> like it's almost <laughs> preposterous that it even happened. It's... <laughs> I, you know, I have complicated feelings on David Lynch generally um i do i do love some of his work i love dune i love of course twin peaks um i i'm still struggling with inland empire Mm. (laughs) i just don't really know what to do with that one but (laughs) i don't know if anyone knows what to do with inland empire i haven't seen it yeah i don't i i i couldn't recommend it but i wouldn't warn against it i just don't really know what it was it was like maximum David Lynch. It was just all the David Lynch you could possibly put in a movie. <laughs> Have you seen The Elephant Man? Oh, I love The Elephant Man. That's probably my favorite thing he's ever done. Mm-hmm. I love The Elephant Man. Have you? No, but I know we've talked. You've talked about it before on the podcast. You've mentioned it at least. Have I? I, I don't so. recall. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's really terrific. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful movie. It's a beautiful movie. It's very well cast. Um, what were some of your favorite moments from? The Force Awakens, or sorry, uh, the Last, Last Jedi. Jedi? Hmm. Either scenes or visuals. Because this one I thought... The shout out to Hardware Wars. Hardware Wars! my favorite moment. Okay, did, you what, probably didn't... I probably, what was it? Okay, when the iron, when it's like, it looks like a spaceship coming down and then it's just an iron. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's this... It, he, it's a visual reference to uh, uh, the greatest Star Wars fan film ever made. Real old school. Okay. Like, this was from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably. I prob- I've probably seen parts of it or something. Yeah, yeah. like it's when, one of those things that they talk about in like documentaries. Yeah, it's like a spoof. It's it's a pretty. Long, it's like a fifteen minute little short fan film. It's sort of cut like it's, a trailer. It's, it's actually not even that long. It's pretty long though. It's cut like a trailer, but it's longer hmm. than a trailer. And it's like spoofing Star Wars, but everything is like. I mean, it's called Hardware Wars. Everything yeah. is like household objects. Yeah. And I just <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi is. Augie Ben Doggy. Augie Ben Doggy. <laughs> and ham salad. 
<laughs> right. And Princess Android. Android. My, I think my favorite moment from Hardware Wars is when the Luke Skywalker character is being given the lightsaber, <laughs> and he's like, "Gee whiz, gee whiz golly, wow, gosh, gosh!" And he just keeps oh, saying this. Well, and then, and then in in, in uh, the Last Jedi, there's also a physical comedy moment where. Ray hands in the lights and just throws her behind him off the cliff. Yes. Yeah. I appreciated the sort of symbol behind that moment. <laughs> but I don't know. My favorite... I have two. Yeah? Let's... So when the um, ship is flown at light speed into Snoke's ship, oh, that, the beautiful... visuals of that moment... Like caught me off guard. I was oh yeah, just, really nice. I like was Held actually breath. stunned. And okay, Will was telling me because he he went and saw it separate from us, and um, apparently people tried to like clap in the theater at that moment, and he's like, just let it yeah. be, like don't ruin yeah, no, it. It was, Shut it was up. like <laughs> I was like mouth open, hands like back. <laughs> I was I, it was so silent in that yeah. theater, and I was just like it was. It was a really stunning moment. It really was, especially because we haven't seen something. Well, I mean, we've seen great, amazing, visual, beautiful shots in in all of the Star Wars movies, but that one was just so so striking, striking and different than a, like a normal mm-hmm. movie shot, especially because it was entirely CG and mm-hmm. and it was a little more um, way less scientific. It was very artistic. Yeah, it, it was. It, it looked like. Like a bit of concept art, almost yeah. like more mm-hmm. than a more than a, an actual shot in a film. Yeah, and okay. then the sound it made when it blew up. Oh, yeah. At some point, go back to concept art. Or put a put a. We can talk about concept art, but no, you have to tell us the second. Oh, the second the one second was one. when um, Luke and Leia meet up, and it felt like. Oh yeah, when he kissed felt, her on the head, it felt I like got a goodbye. Choked. It felt like a goodbye to Carrie Fisher to me. I got real Even choked she, up. She still, you know, continued was in the Luke, movie. Yeah, it was just like, I think they chose that. That mm. um, that um, take. Yeah, I got real specifically misty. to to sort of say goodbye. It was really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. So, what did you want to say about concept art? Oh no, I I was just it just made me think that and maybe we talked about this yesterday. I don't remember, um, but many many years ago, I met Ralph McQuarrie, oh. who you know who painted all that mm-hmm. concept art that made this possible. Yeah, and he was quite an old man. He was actually selling prints of his work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Wow. And, sure and I, you know, I, and I actually got to ask him, you know, kind of what it felt like to have, in essence, been responsible yeah. for this, for something that that, that changed cinema. Really. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, there's more than him, but but if not for those paintings, it would have looked way every, different. Every, <laughs> Probably wouldn't have been he de- made. He yeah. defined it. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have been made. That's that's. Or it would point. not have had the sort of cult into why you know you know the well, immediate it, reception because if they had been on like well they the the know, paintings were responsible for the sale. Ultimately. Yeah, yeah, they sold mm-hmm. it. for the financing and and so I I how interesting he was just just a guy yeah. and you know he didn't really have an answer for that you know because. I think it's it's almost beyond a person who yeah. had like, that kind of impact. It, well, and I mean, maybe that might be one of the reasons that George decided to sort of like let it go. It's like he's like this isn't this is so beyond what I could have ever imagined it being that I don't even know what to do with it anymore. You know, very possibly. Whereas like a corporation knows what to do with it. Disney knows what to do. And now they own much of Fox's assets as well. Oh boy, that's really an interesting. Scenario, huh? <laughs> I think uh, one little tweet that I saw, it was a clip or a, a little screen gap grab from uh, The Simpsons. And it was like quoting something about um, uh, Bart had Disney uh, Mickey Mouse ears on and Marge was saying something about like, don't support that evil corporation. And then somebody was like, Disney owns this now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I saw, you know, the um, the meme of like the, the brain, like... Like the oh, normal yeah. brain, mm-hmm. and then like the and like brain, getting, yeah. yeah. And the it, I saw the one that was like concepts of like Disney and Fox stuff that could like interact with each other. And the the last one, the most enlightened brain, was um, Hank Hill in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> 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 Just, that was too funny. <laughs> Honestly, they're basically there. 
<laughs> I can't. I mean, we've talked about this before. I just can't. I don't know what to do with Kingdom Hearts. I don't know how to... We'll have to see when the next one comes out. Because there's going to be Marvel Worlds and Toy Story Worlds and... Oh my god. Yeah, it's going to really? be overkill. Weird. Weird. Well, what what else have you guys watched besides Star Wars lately? Well, I've been re-watching season two of The Magicians. The Magicians, yes. So yes. it's based off of a book series, and we might have talked about it um, when yeah. it was first airing. Uh, it aired over the summer, I think, season two did. Um, and it's just a very... I, I really respect it because it is very truthful with its characters. Okay. Like, somebody fucked up, they're going to get called out on it, and uh-huh. they're gonna, there's going to be immediate huge ramifications for messing up. The concept is basically Harry Potter college. Yeah, grad school Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> so. Who wrote the books? Oh, I do not. Uh, honestly, I'm not familiar I, with I them. I didn't read the books, but... Um, Sorry. I'd recognize the name if I... I mean, we can look it up, but... Um, they're just, it's just, like, yeah, Harry, Harry Potter, but grown up. And and it also draws heavily on um, uh, Narnia. Yeah, a lot there's, of, there's like, a, there's magic. This, there's other another world, world that's magical, and they go through, like, a, a clock to get to it. And it's... it's fun, fantastical college kid stuff. Yeah, they're like, he's, he's the main character is obsessed with these this book series, and they're like, you have to grow up, you have to grow up. Right. Then he finds out it's real, but it's not a fairy tale. It's, like, really messed up, <laughs> and... One of the kids that sort of explored it when in back in World War Two, like he has turned into this like maleficent, maleficent, malevolent, <laughs> <a> malevolent force. <laughs> Wait, it's a whole transgender thing, right? <laughs> it would be awesome. If, yeah, there would be a place for that, right? but n- no. There's a lot of, yeah. It's just it's very um, exciting and intelligent and raunchy. There's a lot of sex. Yeah. So that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of sex that they get angry at each other for, too. Oh, okay. good. Well, yeah. It's like it's like soap opera. It's a little soapy. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. It's a little soapy. With with magic and, and centaurs. And... Mm-hmm. I heard they're going to do, speaking of centaurs, I heard they're going to do uh, the Xanth books as a series. Interesting. Did you read those? Did no. You read those? I'm, I'm vaguely familiar. Anthony? No? What? Sorry. <laughs> young, young <people. laughs> I mean, I would be surprised if if we didn't run out of. Well, I mean, there's they probably would never run out of intellectual property to to make movies out of. But you know, mm-hmm. they're gonna, that's basically all they're going to do. Especially with Disney being the the big overarching. You know, they don't they don't want to make new things because they know things are going to work. You know, they. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was I was um, watching a little clip on YouTube last night talking about how they're not going to do another Tron movie because it didn't do super well. And then they did um, Tomorrowland right after Tron mm. Legacy, and that lost so much money. Yeah, it, it made like forty two million, and it's, it cost like two hundred million to make. Well, I, I don't know why they they still think that they can make movies out of Disney rights. <laughs> like Pirates of the Caribbean was a fluke, and that was like all well, Johnny Depp's fault. So I don't know what they're thinking that they. They've never worked, except for that. Yes, but if you read the script, the original script to Pirates of the Caribbean, that is a fantastic script. It is. is. It? And a fantastic script. It really is. And, and then a, a tremendous, unforgettable performance. Sure. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a little bit like um, Anthony Perkins in Psycho. Mm. Everybody knows Norman Bates. Yeah. Um, to the point that people who haven't seen Psycho... You know Norman Bates, the name, and they, they think the they sounds, understand their performance. The... If you go back and watch Psycho, it's kind of mind blowing. His his performance is modern. It, you know, we're talking 1962 or something like wow. that. Yeah. So it's really incredible. It's like wow. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why he got typecast, or or, he, or people c- couldn't disconnect quit him. Yeah, identifying him with that because it, it is a it is a fantastic performance. In a way, you know, Depp's performance is that good in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, he's basically um, been that character. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I know exactly. I wouldn't give the whole movie to him. Though. No, no, it's oh, a great yeah. script. The, the the subsequent scripts are, oh, and Jeffrey are Rush not is just... as good. Yeah, Jeffrey Rush oh. is, is great. Oh, he's my favorite. You know, <laughs> poor guy in a little bit of trouble now. Oh, uh, caught up in his own little scandal. But oh, wow. But everyone is. So if Tomorrowland, if that script had been. Good, really good. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Sure, you sure. You'd be having but, a different conversation I mean, right but now. But the only one that ever was good was Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, Country Bears? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Some people love that movie. Haunted yeah. Mansion? Ha- Haunted Mansion? Ha- I love Haunted, Haunted Mansion. Mansion. But that is, that is Haunted because Mansion it's a is, horrible movie. is the Citizen Kane of, <laughs> of Disney Ride movies. No, <laughs> of, it, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, 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 no. like it's uh, okay. Is it true? Is there really no other good one? Yeah, they're all Matterhorn the movie. Remember that? That (laughs) Oh yeah, that that great disaster survival movie. No, they're not. not, (laughs) There aren't any other good ones. Did they make a movie out of jungle? There's also a lot of rides that were made out of movies too. So sure, and that's fine. But the other direction, it's it's just a recipe for disaster. I don't quite know. You just, How it is what they, they need to do is they just need to find a good script and then make it into the ride movie. <laughs> find like some sort of um, just yeah, fu- just l- some sort of Mount Everest thriller and, <laughs> and make it into the matter. Of the one. Iger sanction. Yeah. Ride. You know what they should make into a movie? The Indiana Jones ride. <laughs> yeah, you know what great. I was, I was about to say the Star Wars ride. I remember back in the day they had a Star Wars ride before Disney even had Star Wars under their belt. Yeah. I think they had one, yeah. It's yeah. true. They had the... They had the that was really cool. Ones. There were some really... I was only like six when I went, but it was like really cool. I didn't get to do that one. Oh. You know, I haven't been on Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. That was a weird way to say that. Um, I haven't been on Pirates of the Caribbean since they updated it. I don't... I haven't either. I've only been there once. Which update? The Any. current one. You mean the one where they put Johnny Depp in it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was a great movie. I heard... I even, heard that even it was though good. it really is the greatest ride ever created in Disney, it still is the best thing they ever did. Most immersive, ride. the most fanciful, the most wonderful. But what it didn't have um, was some kind of a, a through line. It didn't that, have a story. Uh, it, it was just you're immersed in this world, and that was pretty. It was very great. good. Yeah. I loved that ride. But by putting Jack Sparrow in that, it made it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I think that was a great move. Now this this new PC move of sort of oh. uh, they're not selling women uh, they're not being pirates or whatever like they, uh, they're pirates they're bad guys that's lame. like well, <clears throat> that doesn't work and it's it's the it's the weird Disney idea it, they turned pirates into Braveheart they're pirates <laughs> they're villains they're bad people like they do bad things and like should go to jail like we can't turn it into this we must fight for our right to be pirates thing <laughs> okay. like they, they're pirates true but um <laughs> so since since you do apparently talk about tv did you oh, sure, did lots. you watch black sails because this remarkably is, i didn't uh, well you must i know that I'm not. because it's really fantastic and it really sort of uh i, I mean to a certain extent it you know it, in the early, you know, first season, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure show. It's pirates and, and, sure. and it's sexy and, 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 yeah. and some of it's a bit camp and a bit bit silly. You're but speaking you my s- language. Yeah, you said <laughs> yeah. it like the bad thing. It's really fantastic, but it gets it gets more and more serious and more and more interesting. And and actually, they knew what they were doing. They they understood when you know really before episode one where this thing was going to go, um, and. They, they they delve into this idea that pirates were more than just villainous, you know, guys out to get rich. That there was there were there were political agendas. There was mm-hmm. there was more a culture. than just oh let's go let's go let's go be hit a, a Spanish galleon and get rich. Um, uh-huh. I'm sure there was a lot of that going on, but there were other figures who were pirates. For other reasons. Sure. And Absolutely. it's pretty cool. Absolutely. No, and that it's a sounds great. Series. great but really great series. But when and, and you like Maggie Smith, right? And her son who, is the star who doesn't of that like series. Maggie Smith. Yeah. But but I mean you know what I'm saying. With like Pirates Three and they're like have have their like pirate revolution, like okay. fighting against the I tyrannical love, forces I of I love that one. Everybody <laughs> everybody thinks the first one is the only good one. I love the second well, and third one. I'm a weird fourth contrarian. I, oh, I, no, haven't I like it. the fourth. See, I haven't yeah, seen. we're weird as like. The Wait, which one's the fourth one? I get a moment. Uh, it's that's the one with Blackbeard and. Okay, I don't mind that one, but I never saw the fifth one. I didn't either, I which is weird either. because I really like Javier Bardem, but I was just like, I don't know if I can do this I again. I, I don't. I don't know if I can do this again. Yeah. But no. Okay, so speaking of other parody things, so um. Did you play the Uncharted series at all? No, Nathan I did Drake. Not. I know about it. And I didn't, yeah, because the the last one, the fourth 
game that j came out a couple months ago now, I guess more than a couple, but came out this year, I guess, um, was all about pirates. It was about like, um, gosh, now I can't think of the name, which, which one it was, but like all those, you know, very famous pirates and the idea that they like got together and, um, made like a pirate utopia <laughs> like they went off because that like, would work really well, well but the great thing is you know the whole thing you're like what no way yeah. but then it turned out it was like all a scheme to like double cross all the rest of yeah. the pirates and steal all of their gold <laughs> um but it was just really funny to play through because it's you know one of those like tomb raidery type yeah. indiana jones things and so it's like you're going through like all these caves with these contraptions that are like somehow still working even though they're built in like the 17th century and <laughs> but they kind of they, they lampshade it you know they're like you know wow this stuff still works does he have any money left after building all of this like <laughs> just this preposterous weird like obstacle course to find this pirate haven that was just a trick anyway but but that, that was a fun bit of pirate media yeah. i quite enjoyed that one it's good pirate stuff we were um at, towards the end of last episode having a conversation about how tragic it is that good movies about knights are so few and far between yeah exactly. i brought up lady hawk of course no wonderful and we talked about some that were we thought were good but were not actually good like um, um, King Arthur, King Arthur. <laughs> the Clive Owen King Clive Arthur. Owen. Mm. It had yeah. some nice ideas. Well, ideas. <laughs> if you go <laughs> back good to the, uh, the John Borman uh, King Arthur, right? Okay. Um, have you seen that? No. Mm -mm. Oh come on, you guys. <laughs> so Borman had grown up <clears throat> since he was a little kid. He'd been hearing the the Arthurian story, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and he loved it. He loved it, and all he wanted to do was make a movie about King Arthur and so uh, you know eventually he was able to do that and, and at first he tried to do the same thing which was to to devise a story based sort of on, on something more you know you might say historically accurate <laughs> um, oh those and, ideas and then he he came to realize very quickly and he has said this he's talked about this that the myth is more powerful than the reality yeah. and you cannot it, okay. anybody who comes to King Arthur wants the myth yeah they do not if they see want the reality some, they'll question it they'll be like right. no that's not how I heard it exactly yeah. and, and, and not even that it's just that it, it, it's it, not it, fun it anymore. comes with these heightened elements they may not be real mm -hmm. but they're, they're what we're there for we're there mm -hmm. for yeah. heightened yeah. Excalibur yeah. and the Lady of the Lake and 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 a kind of shining armor that is actually not accurate to to the period of time that. Yeah. Oh sure, I mean it, yeah. The the trappings of the stories are always like high Middle Ages, you know, thirteen hundreds. But it's like, but like the real, you know, when when the story is told, it's imagined to be like long before the you know the Norman Conquest. This is way before you know England existed. So like it would have been like furs and rags. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it okay, would not so have. Your assignment is to go to see. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm uh, down. This yes, film because for sure. it's first of all, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. It's a, li it's a little bit murky in some in, in a narrative sense, but it's it's incredible, and it's populated almost entirely by actors who were unknown, mm -hmm. and yet you'll know every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? What year it came out? This would have been the late '70s, okay. probably or '80. Uh -huh. Well, and, and that's interesting because I feel like around that time, sort of in the 70s, there, that sort of medievalism was very um, fashionable. You know, people were really into that sort of fun, like, There was a moment where, where a bit of fantasy caught in America for a nanosecond, mm -hmm. um, and then it went away, and nobody in, in the U.S. really cared that much about fantasy and, and, and medieval fantasy, but any kind of fantasy, really, until, you know, Jackson? these two, two amazing things happened, right? <laughs> yeah. Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And then, and then now ever it's, since, it's, now it's, it's, all, it's all fantasy. It's insane. Yeah. Now, and now we have, you know, Game of Thrones. But I, I yeah, actually, yeah, Game of Thrones is pretty Would interesting, he? but I kind of prefer, qu quite honestly... The bit of fantasy you can find from the late seventies and early eighties, sure. um, because Lady it, there was Hawk. no yeah Lady Hawk, 
fantastic. It's uh, beautiful. No CGI, mm-hmm. so you're looking at practical effects that feel more realistic. There's a m- there's a more down to earth sense of things. Um, they had to actually figure out how to shoot something rather than do just like, oh, we'll do it camera. later. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it later. Um, and you know, uh, so like in in Borman's uh, King Arthur movie, they they wanted the world to glow, right? They mm. wanted this kind of Mag- magical thing. Yeah. So anytime you know where, where there's moss on. On stones and stuff, they had incredible lighting instruments mm-hmm. set up with green gels, and they they turn these on and and so there's real light, yeah. you know, coming off of of, oh, of, God, of I've got real to see stone this. and moss, and and it does it it creates and he would wait he would wait for hours and hours and That's hours the right for the perfect light yeah. to come oh. and the clouds to part just enough to do well that just makes me think of Thor Ragnarok where they're just po- in post put on that cliff and it's oh, like the lighting the ugliest scene I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life it's so tragic because so much of Thor Ragnarok is a very cool stylish movie but there's this one scene where Thor and Loki and Odin are hanging out on a cliff in Norway and it's the ugliest, worst lit scene I've ever... It looks like it's lit by floodlights. Like, everything is just <laughs> flat. It's terrible. It's hideous. I couldn't believe my eyes. When well, you know they're not there because in the trailer, and I did go back and check... You did. It took place in the streets of New York in the trailer, so they just they just Yeah, the they're just on a green screen. They're just on a green screen. Isn't it horrible? Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a really ugly scene. Ugh. The rest of the movie is great. I recommend it, but that scene is that's ugly. A, that's lazy filmmaking. It's ugly. I mean, they probably ran out of money. But. Okay, I don't know so <laughs> Excalibur. I didn't say the name. The movie's called Excalibur. Okay, okay that's thank your you. Assignment. That'll be our assignment yeah. and our listeners. listeners. Excalibur. All five of you. <laughs> <laughs> dragon Slayer. That's a great one. It's a classic. Funny. The greatest dragon movie ever made. Better than Dragonheart? Oh, <laughs> Dragonheart's pretty uh, pretty campy and amazing. Yeah. Dragonheart's alright. Dragonheart 2 is phenomenal. I, I feel like I've seen it. it, but I don't remember liking it as much. I, they did they just did it was either made for TV or like one of those cheap little uh direct to instant ones. Um it was like I think it's on they, Netflix. They, like they regressed the uh, the the franchise a bit and they decided it was for young adults. Okay. Than, so so sure. it was my friend wrote it, so I'm uh, giving him a shout out. It, but it is actually it's a it's a ton of fun. Um, but Dragon Slayer, you you'll never see better dragons. What they're doing on Game of Thrones, absolutely influenced by Dragon Slayer, absolutely. And then maybe there was a, a film called Reign of Fire. Oh, yeah, Reign of Fire. Had great dragons. And that was Weird. like a fantasy Weird. movie that was a different genre than just fantasy. Yeah. It was, it was like, you know, like science fiction or thriller. Even it yeah. was like very tense the whole time because they're like being. It's like siege. like an apocalypse, like a dragon yeah. apocalypse. <laughs> Basically, that's yeah. a unique kind of an apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, I was I was totally annoyed when that movie came out because one of the very first pitches I ever did in Hollywood was at Jim Henson Productions, and I pitched dragons versus World War II airplanes. <laughs> great, <laughs> that'd be awesome. That's great. Well, uh, rain of fire I mean, Jim is not so far off. This, oh you yeah, can go back yeah, and yeah, pitch yeah, it again. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to, you just have to think of a, a famous person from history that you can have as the main character, so that they'll be like, okay, people will know who that is. Let's make yeah. it. Well, somebody has made it because somebody told, okay. told me the other day about a dragons versus uh, World uh, War II okay. movie. And I was like, I I knew that it. Was mine. <laughs> I knew it a long time ago. I want royalties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's no original idea. Some, somebody else got lucky. <laughs> well, uh, you know, speaking of um, like Arthurian legend and stuff, I actually just the other day went and I, for the first time in my life actually sat down and listened to the soundtrack to Camelot, the, the musical. Richard so, Harris? No. No, Richard Burton. Richard Harris. The, the, the stage musical? Yeah, Richard Harris. Not on this recording. Really? 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 Okay. Google fight. Yeah, and, and, and Julie Andrews and Robert Goulet. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, it's not Richard go, Harris. Go, go. I wonder if Richard Harris I, maybe. I have my phone. You go ahead and Google it. I wonder if he stepped in for a Yeah, no, the, the, one, the, the, the... Sound, the recording that's on Spotify. But no, yeah. I loved it. It was so charming. Like, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying um, going back and listening to a lot of older musicals from like the you know, late 60s, early 70s, that that era is really growing on me right now because it's just so fun. Like, just fun. It's just really... I mean, Camelot is 
hilarious. I didn't realize it's a very funny show. Like it's kind of ridiculous to me that there's a spoof of Camelot when Camelot's already a comedy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's already a comedy. It's a very, very funny musical. Julie Andrews was cracking me up. She's so <laughs> funny. She's one of the funniest women that ever lived. Uh, but it was just really charming. Um, I also am just a real big fan of uh, Stephen Schwartz's early musical Pippin, mm-hmm. which is a fun, another fun sort of fantasy concept. Um, just these, like, real sweet fun, like, early 70s sort of fantastical things. They're just There's something so earnest about them yeah. that I'm really getting into these days. So everything is so dour nowadays. Well, and they're not, it's also the, that thing where, like, I feel like a lot of comedies these days are trying so hard to be a comedy. <laughs> yeah. Where, you know, you're like, we're going to get this, this, like, Jumanji. Ugh. Well, like, now I'm looking forward to that. Are you? Yeah. I'm not in any way am I looking forward to that movie. No, no. I mean, it, I don't know. It could be funny, but I'm just... I like each cast member separately. <laughs> <laughs> you are right. <laughs> I just Harris listened to it. Harris took over later. Yeah, yeah I just listened that to it, so lot. I was sure. That I would have remembered who was Richard Harris. Do you know who else was in that? You guys are not going to know who this guy John Cullum was in that cast. I don't know you? that. Did you ever see Northern Exposure? No. Uh, who, did, who did he play in One of the in great that? shows... One of the great shows. I've, I've heard good things. Right, I've heard, so, but who was well, he then in, we won't go there. Who was he in Camelot, though? He was Sir Dinadan. Oh, Sir Dinadan. Okay. Yeah, he's in a very Roddy funny McDowell? song. Roddy McDowell? What? Mordred? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's so funny. I love his song, The Seven Deadly Virtues. <laughs> it's a very cute one. But, wow. but yeah, like, like uh, in a similar vein, um, the, the Last Unicorn... The oh, yeah, anime. Oh, I love The Last Unicorn. And it's just that 70s, just like real fun, sort of gentle, down to earth <laughs> kind of lovely fantasy. I, I really enjoy Clearly it. Clearly, you've not watched Ralph Bakshi for a while. Oh, sure, I have. That's a whole <laughs> other thing. Interesting. It's funny you bring that up because the studio that animated um, The Last Unicorn animated The. Hobbit cartoon, mm-hmm. and then Ralph Bakshi made the Lord of the Rings cartoon. Yeah, we had that in episode two. We talked about that. Episode two? No, in an episode as Oh, well. yes. Yeah. So like, that was a long time ago, buddy. No, <laughs> no yeah, I don't that, remember that far, that far yeah, back. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that in our Lord of the Rings episode a few mm-hmm. a few back. But, um, yeah, just that real, you know, that cute kind of fantasy. Like, I, I, obviously, I love Game of Thrones. I love those books. I love all of that stuff. But it's always so, like hard and dark and i like the fun sort of like light-hearted fantasy that i just feel like we don't get anymore yeah they've sort of like camp when it happens now is on accident <laughs> like even then you know the last jedi like it was way less campy way less funny than um than any of the others well yeah. with the exception of rogue one. Oh, but that one was really smart and funny Less yeah, but it was pretty though. dark, too. Yeah. It was very yeah. dark, in fact. Everyone died. Yeah. <laughs> they did. And that's probably the best movie ending I've seen in a long time. Well, as fans of camp and as fans of fantasy, if you haven't seen the 70s classic Zardoz, oh, Zardoz. you better see it. <laughs> okay. I don't know Sean if... Sean Connery I don't running know around if basically I can, naked. I oh. can't... I don't know if I can take a whole movie of that. <laughs> I don't, I don't have a man in a world ruled by women. It's just a lot of hair. <laughs> just everywhere. But not, but not on his head. I just never really liked Sean Connery that much. He's got his place. He's he got... Does. there. Are, there's a time in and the a past. Place. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and Sardoz is very much a relic of the past. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, is it though? Because now there's that new TV show. Um, I think it's on Netflix actually. Oh, I forget what it's called, but it's like this old west town where it's all run by women, and there's like these oh, men that are trying yeah, to attack. Oh yeah, well yeah, but no, Zardoz is something else. A psychedelic. <laughs> He's we're in like a just like this underwear situation okay. and straps, and that's it. Fun. Lots of Connery happening. <laughs> Full Connery. maximum Connery. Yes, lots of Connery. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to Zardoz you here. 
Yeah, oh, you've got to see this. It. Okay, I will. You have to see this picture here. It's just real. I'm going to love it, I'm sure. It's Very He Man. a lot to see. There you go. Okay, that is less He Man and more like uh, Lilu from <laughs> <laughs> The Fifth Element. Speaking yeah. of my favorite movie, that's my favorite oh, movie. Oh, I all time. love Fifth Element. Fifth Element. Element. Favorite movie of all time. Love Fifth Element. I don't know if it's my favorite, like, quality or storyline wise or like emotional impact but i can watch it any day of the week what, as as we have uh, a phrase we've coined it's a mashed potatoes movie it's a mashed potatoes movie <laughs> Where, when you it's, the, it's the just... movie equivalent of comfort food yeah oh okay yeah, you just need to stuff it there's a close encounters uh, <laughs> no not quite like you're that... crazy if you watch this movie yeah no it, though oh. close encounters could be a mashed potatoes movie yes yeah yeah mm. we coined this when we were uh talking to dylan gary oldman I love him in that. He's insane. I mean, Gary Oldman's always insane, but like, I don't know what he's doing in that movie. It's, it's so like the weirdest like accent. Yeah. <laughs> Barbecue like, sauce blood. Yeah, he's like Foghorn <laughs> Leghorn with a like. <laughs> he is. I don't understand. Oh my goodness, that yeah. movie is a masterpiece in my. Opinion. It's wonderful. It's... I'm just really sad because I, I still haven't seen Valerian, but I've heard bad things. I've heard mixed things. So I'm a little sad Did you about Luke see Valerian? And... I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I've heard it's pretty. It looked, I mean, the trailer was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I feel like after seeing that trailer, I basically saw the movie though. Yeah. I just, I just, I feel bad because again, you know, Fifth Element, favorite movie. And then the director just, since then I've not enjoyed. Yeah, well, you know, and speaking of Besson, I have such mixed feelings on Leon, the professional. Because, I mean, it's a it's a wonderful... Have you seen Leon? Mm-hmm. It's wonderful, but also kind of icky. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and apparently, I haven't read it, but apparently the original script is even more so. Mm. Apparently it was like an explicitly pedophilic relationship in the oh. original script. Oh. Well, and, and Luc Besson, like his first wife... He first met her when he was like 18 and she was like 12. So that says something about him as a man. I don't know. I don't know anything about it personally. But yeah, so like, ah, it's it's a wonderful movie. And, um, you know, Natalie Portman is like stunning. She's tiny and amazing. (laughs) But, (laughs) uh, But yeah, it does. I just like, it doesn't. Doesn't quite say it right. There's another Gary Oldman, crazy Gary Oldman performance. That's a great performance. It's like really great. He's, he's just he's, he's just psychotic. Like this coked out cop. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. You, you should you should see it. I mean, I like to watch as many movies by directors I enjoy, so I'll, I'll get to it eventually. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. I I I do like it, but there's just a little niggling feeling in the yeah. back of my head that I'm uncomfortable with what's going yeah. on. Yeah. I think for the fifth element too, um, half the stories in um, Jean Paul Gaultier's costumes, I feel like. Oh, it's so good. They're so Those good. costumes are so good. <laughs> it's just, and like, I mean, I grew up watching that movie. Oh, yeah. So it's just like such a big part of my conception of science fiction. Like, it, it's just ingrained into me like that's like some yeah the some people, fun some people sci-fi future world um are really into die hard i'm really into fifth element as as what bruce willis movies yeah. go well, i mean I, you know a lot of people are really into die hard and i'm like eh. it's good yeah it's good but <laughs> it's a good movie to watch at christmas time but does he have a cat he doesn't have a cat in die hard he doesn't <laughs> I don't know even how to get into this. Oh, I'm me- mix- mixed up, messed up. It's all good. Yeah, we just we go off on things sometimes. Mm. <laughs> what 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 would you say is a mashed potatoes movie for you, Chris? Uh, a mashed potatoes movie. Uh, give me the definition of so mashed it's, potatoes. It's the kind of movie that comfort, you just... Comfort, comfort movie. movie. Something you just... You, if it's you on love, TV, even if it's halfway through, you'll finish it. You you want to watch it. You It always feels right. You know, it's just... It feels good. Even oh, if it doesn't have know. to be good for you. <clears throat> it's just nice. Oh. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Good probably. choice. Good choice. But, you know, it's a great film, too. It is. Yeah, great, <laughs> There's nothing wrong great, with it. My favorite movie is a great film. <laughs> <laughs> Something sort of—it's just—it's so sound, you the know. It's wrath fun. of Khan. 
That's a good one too. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird. No. No. Maybe not that no. One. That's that one. I feel like that's a great film. It's Actually, potentially no, a little no, too a little no, too intense a for potato. for mashed potatoes. No, movie. no. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> doesn't quite fit in the criteria of of mashed potatoes. Okay, and what is yours? You know, I can't remember what I said I last remember. time. I really don't. Then you Maybe don't really know. Pirates of the Caribbean. Ah. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. I love that movie. I love it. I couldn't tell you the number of times I've watched it. Mm. It's just. It got my heart. <laughs> so good. It was formative for me. You know, it came out when I was in like fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, you know, I was sort of, it, it's kind of funny because I remember when the trailers came out, I was a little like concerned about it being scary for me <laughs> because there were the pirate, the you know, the skeleton pirates. And I was like, oh, I don't like scary things. I was a bit like my sister at that age, very afraid of anything remotely spooky. But I was like, I'm going to be brave, and I'm going to see it. And I went out with my mom, and we saw it, and I loved it so much. And, it, you know, it was just, it was different. You know, I hadn't really watched those kinds of movies at that point yet. So I, yeah, it was a big part of my life <laughs> for thought, many years. I thought of another one, Men in Black. Good one, uh -huh. good one. I yeah. watched that when I was much too young for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like five years old. Well, yeah, that's about how old we were when it came yeah. out. Mm -hmm. I saw it in theaters. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I saw it in theaters with my best friend at the time. Wow, your mm -hmm. five-year-old best friend? I think he was probably six or seven. <laughs> oh, well then. One of my favorite stories about that film that sort of goes around town and, uh, you know, um, is that Tommy Lee Jones just didn't know what was going on? It was a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and he was actually very annoyed about how Will Smith was playing it and, and even went as far as to, to, you know, bring this up and maybe oh, wow. you know, discuss that he might need to be removed or something. <laughs> and uh, he really had no clue. Which is so funny because his performance is amazing. Of course. He's, he, he's great. He's fantastic. Yeah. Is this story true? Uh, I've... I have reason to believe it is true, but well, I don't know it firsthand. That's a fun. That's a fun tale either way. Yeah, which is funny because he's done plenty of comedies since then too. Yeah, he's great at sort of that that deadpan yeah. thing, and I mean maybe that's why it worked so well in yeah, Men in Black. I think so. Because he's like he's actually the straight man. Like it's he's not yeah. just playing the straight man. He, he, he's, he's acting. The, yeah. he's, no, he's not acting. Yeah, he's, he's just really there. <laughs> he's like, who is this fool? <laughs> Messing up my movie. <laughs> He's just living it. It's a serious movie about aliens. This is a science fiction oh, drama. Another movie that is just so horrible, but I will watch it no matter what point it's at. It's Mars Attacks. Oh. Horrible movie. What so good. I mean, is it horrible? It's it's what it it's what it meant to be. That's true. It's it's it, absolutely it, 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 what it meant to be. Well, then I remember the scene with uh, Sarah Jessica Parker switching heads with the. Chihuahua? Yes. So, I mean, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh... One that I used to love to just put on and fall asleep to is Troy. <laughs> Troy? Really? Yes! Troy, with, like... And it put you to sleep. Well, no. <laughs> you and many, many people. <laughs> I mean, sort of. I enjoyed it, but no, I was so... I've never seen it, so really? I don't know what I'm talking no, about. No, I mean, it, it's... It's a little like we were talking about with with King Arthur. It's like yeah. it's it's got some good ideas, it's got some cool stuff, but it's it's not riveting. And I, I know I was so familiar with it, like I was already a big Greek mythology nerd, so there were no surprises in the film for me. And then you know it was just like just put it on, and you know after a sleepover or something, I come home, on, lay on the couch, put on Troy, and fall asleep to it. Like it was just yeah pleasant. Mm -hmm. It was just pleasant. Oh man, did you get so Spotify? Just did that, like, um, you know, oh, the rewind, rewind of like your top music. songs uh -huh. of Prison <laughs> And I was shocked to find in mine the Josh Groban song Remember from the Troy soundtrack. <laughs> what year is this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was listening to Josh Groban radio. <laughs> I like Josh Groban. <laughs> Now that's mashed potatoes for me, Josh, Josh Groban. Groban. <laughs> yeah, I've had a I've had a tumultuous relationship with Josh Groban's music. 
As a teenager, of course, I, I adored Josh Groban, because teenage <laughs> girls are contractually obligated to enjoy Josh Groban. And then I got over it. I was like, whatever, he's not even that good of a singer. <laughs> um, and then I've come back to his music recently, and I'm like, you know what? He's doing all right. Like, I get his thing. Like, he puts out a Christmas album, sings some lovely songs, middle-aged ladies enjoy it, and we go on with our lives. Like, I get what he's doing. And I like it. And, and She's a, the oldest middle-aged, or the youngest middle-aged lady. You don't know the half of it. I'm an old woman. <laughs> uh, but no, and that's actually how I found my very favorite musical, Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been talking about it to everyone that I meet because I <laughs> love it a lot. Do we have any recommendations? I know I have one. Yeah, what's your what's your recommendation? This so week? I just read it last night. I bought it at Powell's. Um, the Witch Boy. It's a graphic, I was curious about that. It's a graphic novel aimed at um, middle schoolers, and it's about a um, a young boy, probably about 13, 14, um, in a family of all magical people, and all of the men in the family are shapeshifters. All the women are witches, hmm. but he, he wants to learn how to do the magic. And he's not interested at all it. in shape shifting. It's like a fun fantasy trans story. Yeah, it's a little more um, uh, just like it's it's a little less trans and a little more like uh, kid kid who's not really into mm-hmm. the same thing all the other boys are. Okay, okay. Um, it could have easily been about you know a trans character, but that's just not what the. You know. There's a bit more in just a queer direction. With yeah, mm-hmm. and it's not necessarily nailed down because it's, you know, for middle schoolers. But yeah. it's just very like, okay, um, you want to do magic, you're good at it, let's do it. Hmm. So, And it's it's pretty and it's cute and it's um, it's from the heart, which is really nice. Yeah, it sounds like, I kind of think I need to borrow it from oh, you yeah. because you it totally looks... It. I should have brought it. I, I did bring a book because I was like, <laughs> oh, I might need to sit and read something for a second. But Yeah, well, um, I'll... I'm sure we'll see each other again in four months. And yep. <laughs> Episode, would it be 42? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> there were 21 episodes? Yeah, 21. Can't believe it. The podcast is Who old enough. Who wouldn't want to shape shift? I don't know. Well, it was, it was also like the culture of the boys in the family. They're very like rough housing and sports oriented. And um, the shape shift into things like hammers or... Bears. No, it's it was animals like uh-huh. wolves and bears. Yeah, and, yeah. and, oh, and they were they were also they would pick on him too because he, he <laughs> so you know, I will not him. shapeshift. <laughs> well, I mean, um, it just shapeshift into something that can beat them up. You know? <laughs> he doesn't want to beat them want, up. He, he likes shapeshift the magic. into Godzilla. <laughs> They What's didn't get a pick. <laughs> they, they, oh, found a, they don't get the pick. No, it was a spirit that sort of an animal spirit. That oh, went. okay, yeah. cool, fun. But it, good. It, at the end, it turns out that. Um, it was all just the family had preconceptions of what you could and couldn't do, and it was just, they were wrong. And the grandma was just like, "What are you guys doing? What a fun little <laughs> let him memory. do what he wants." <laughs> I love that. I love that character of like the the wise old grandma who's just like, "Oh, you're all just being nonsensical. Like, yeah. calm down." <laughs> no, she doesn't even show up until the end because it, it turns out the, the villain of well, I don't want to say it. Well, you pretty much know it's it's her brother. Okay. So it sort of themes that happened with him happen again with uh, the main young boy so that's fun that's fun yeah. um, well I hadn't actually thought of a recommendation before but um, bringing up comics uh, a, a comic that I, I read a while ago but I've just revisited recently that I just really love it's a fun young adult comic called Anya's Ghost mm. um, it's about this teenage girl who like gets sort of haunted but <laughs> she gets this little ghost friend Aww. um and this girl she's just like this weird little ghost girl but then she sort of starts like she becomes sort of parasitic to anya and oh. like wants to sort of consume her and it, it's this very interesting story it's a little bit about like um friends who will like use you and oh, that kind of that's thing that's a really good thing to teach middle schoolers <laughs> i wish yeah. i had been taught that in middle school <laughs> yeah, so it's a really great story about a girl and a ghost. Um, I do recommend it. Do recommend it. Do you uh, have anything you've hmm. enjoyed, well, since you enjoyed recently? Since you mentioned Josh Groban, <laughs> I would recommend Mindhunter, which <gasps> oh, is uh, really fantastic. Yes, of course, that's not Josh Groban. 
Oh, isn't it? No. No, no. Jonathan but... Groff. Jonathan Groff. Sorry. Gro- similar Ro- name. Si- similar si- name. Oh, is it kind of a similar boy? Similar background. Similar right? hair sometimes. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> but no. I'm sorry. But no, no. no. Apologies it's to a... these actors. But no. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific series. It, um, yes, I enjoyed it. I'm sure they'd both be flattered to be mistaken be for the other. Be compared to the other, <laughs> yes. I'm sure neither of them would take offense. That's right. Um, yeah, that's a great show. Mm-hmm. Uh, wonderful dialogue, great characters. Um Making serial killers scary again. Oh gosh! Instead of uh, you know, you know, evening viewing on CBS. <laughs> you know. Yeah, like without stupid saying stupid serial anything, killer of the week. That um, last scene with Ed Kemper was oh fantastic, ugh. fantastic. And the casting in the show is great. The dialogue is 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 great. The the attention to detail. Well, in, what do you, what do you expect from David great. Fincher? Like yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's, no, it's done right and. Based on a very interesting book that, you know, so there, there's an awful lot of, you know, reality in it. There's, yeah. there's a certain amount of license they've taken, but 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 just bridging that that kind of, you know, what the FBI was and, and what it would be in, in developing profiling and yeah. you know, that is just really interesting. I think it's a terrific series. I agree. I enjoyed it intensely. And and, and the impact, right? Uh, Of when you delve into this, when you delve into this kind of psychology, you are not just going to to be unaffected by it, you know. Yeah, this the the journey of this character is really. I think all of them. I think they're all they're all affected by this. You Mm -hmm. cannot go into you know the mouth of madness. Yeah, you can't stare into the void. Just kind of (laughs) like you know, go home. Especially with the methods they use of trying to be their friend. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great, great one. isn't it? Oh, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. Great. Recommended all around. I recommend everything Jonathan Graff says. <laughs> Three Have you watched up. Woods, Taking Woodstock yet? I have not oh. watched Taking Woodstock yet. So good. Such a small role for him, but so good. <laughs> that does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us, and like the video if you only like us. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember... No no guilty guilty pleasures! pleasures. (laughs) And Merry Christmas! (laughs) Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful with you. Let's go, boys. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time is wonderful, wonderful with you. Christmas, Christmas time.